Sydney was the backdrop to the ninth consecutive London sculpture in the city, fairly familiar, but so were a fair few of the installations taking part. Although a latecomer to the 2018 collection last year, the contrasting sight of the iconic skyscrapers of the Financial Square Mile surrounding Doho Sars Bridging Home London can be contemplated here for another year, meaning some will not be too pleased to not have access to the Wormwood Street footbridge for yet another 12 months. Last year's explosion of animal forms known as Crocodilius philodendrus, the inverted obelisk of Climb, the simple beauty of Sari Garden, which must be dried and aired by now, and the now aptly named I'm Staying, also remain in place until at least June 2020. The tree outside 100 Bishop's Gate is also familiar to the exhibition, having regularly featured in and around past installations. This year, a piece by Leo Fitzmorris stands in front of it, informing passers-by that they are entering the poetic idyll and not Sir Philip Green's fledging business empire of Arcadia which also appears to cover the area immediately around Lloyds of London and the plaza in front of Fenchurch Street Station. The Garden of Floating Words by Elisa Artesero continues the use of words in some of the newer installations. As well as You've Gone, Touching Leaves in the Moonlight, visitors can also find Nathan Coley's message for everyone in Cunard Place and within a realm of relative form, a pursuit of, a form, an essential compression of, a form, an essential expansion of, a form, a degradation of, a form, an objectification of whichsoever form, altogether now, it's Lawrence Wiener's piece at the Leaden Hall building. Letters may not be found in Patrick Tutofuoko's piece, The Source, but words feature here also, in the form of a sign language, requiring three hands. The celebration of flora and especially trees seems to be another running theme in this year's collection. Stag Night by Michael Lyons here was inspired by the creator's drawings of trees in Cumbria's Grisdale Forest, where carts were being used to remove felled trunks and a large stag wandered into view. The preserved lava moulds of trees caught up in the Hawaiian volcanic explosion of 1790 and can still be seen there today, inspired this iridescent piece by Salvatore Arancio, possibly making the grey bollards surrounding it feel rather envious. And found inside the entrance to one of London's best-kept secrets, for now at least, the garden roof terrace at 120 Fenchurch Street, offering arguably the best panoramic views of London for free, is the equally stunning Botanic by Jennifer Steinkamp. At present, this beautiful floral projection on the ground floor ceiling will only be seen here during July 2019, with occasional screenings after that. So catch it if you can. The exchange and nurturing of plants between the UK and the Netherlands as a symbol of peace after the Anglo-Dutch wars of the 17th century is celebrated in Jill Bradley's delightful Dutch light for Agneta Bloch. Miss Bloch was the first horticulturalist in Europe to grow a pineapple from seed, though probably not inside a glass house as colourful as this one. More colourful, transparent material for the light to shine through is used in Marissa Ferreira's series Industrial Windows 1, found on the corner of Cullum Street. And the contrast between Reza Aramesh's more traditional anatomical sculpture with Kevin Francis Gray's more fluid piece does leave one marvelling on just how malleable a seemingly hard and rigid material like marble can be. A similar play with our perceptions of materials is Nina Saunders' abstract mass. These deceptively comfortable looking armchairs are actually made from concrete, so don't expect to sink into these cushions whilst enjoying the view of the office block opposite.